The Colorado State Library presents Play, Learn, and Grow, a video for anyone caring for babies, toddlers, and preschoolers. Hello and welcome. My name is Kate. I am a parent, a caregiver, and an early literacy librarian with the Colorado State Library. You might be a grandparent, neighbor, friend, babysitter, or other person caring for babies, toddlers, or preschoolers. If so, this video series is for you. We all love the children in our care. We want them to grow up healthy and happy. Lucky for us, that's naturally what children do. These videos offer you fun ideas for connecting with the children in your care and supporting their growth through play each day. We know that caring for babies, toddlers, and preschool children is physically and emotionally demanding. And the fact that you are here with us right now already shows how dedicated you are to the children that you care for. We also know you already use your skills, knowledge, and heart to do an amazing job of helping little ones play, learn, and grow. The care you provide is incredibly important. So thank you for your commitment to the children you care for. Did you know that babies and toddlers are natural brain builders? At birth, babies already have 100 billion neurons, or brain cells. So they might not have a lot to say yet, but they are born ready to learn. Every day, these neurons are building connections, and their brains are growing rapidly. In the first few years of life, a baby forms over 1 million new brain connections every second of the day. As you can see, a child's brain grows more and more rapidly during the first five years than at any other time in their life. These connections are made by playing, talking, moving, exploring, and reading together each and every day. Neural connections grow stronger with repetition and naturally fade away over time if not used. The more opportunities a child has to explore their world through play before age five, the more they develop healthy bodies and minds, ready for more formal learning throughout their lives. One of the most important factors in this development is the responsive and attentive relationships between a caregiver and child. And that means you play a vital role in setting the stage for children to play, learn, grow, and thrive. Play is how children learn. In this video series, we will share playful tips and learning activities for you and the young children in your care. You'll discover how to encourage growth in three areas of early learning, literacy development, physical movement, and early science curiosity. We'll also show you some fun ways to play and learn together with items you probably already have around the house. In addition, your local children's librarian can help you discover even more play-based learning activity ideas, along with wonderful picture books to enjoy together with the children you care for. Be sure to reach out to your local public library to explore all the free early learning resources available in your community. Hi, I'm Melody. I'm a mom, as well as an early literacy librarian. Did you know that every time you talk, read, sing, dance, and play with children, you help them build healthy brains and bodies? Children rely on us to provide love, shelter, safety, and food for their bodies. But what about feeding their developing brains? Reading and talking from birth are the foundation of their brain building. When you make reading together a regular part of your day, Children associate books with love and joy. Do you want me to read this book to you? Can you read it with me? Sure. It may seem like a small difference, but reading with your children rather than to them can have a huge impact on their engagement and learning. Reading with a child can mean asking questions as you read, talking about the pictures in the book, or making connections between the book and your child's world. When you invest time in sharing the experience of reading with a child, you're helping to create connections in their brains that will last a lifetime. What else do you see in the shopping cart? Banana. Banana. Did you notice that pause? When you ask children questions about what you're reading, young children take longer to answer than adults, an average of five to seven seconds longer. 
Young children have many more connections or pathways between their neurons or brain cells than adults do. So when they hear a question, that question must travel from their ears through their brains and be processed by their language centers. Then their brains have to access prior knowledge they can use to answer the question, send it back to their language centers, put it into words, and send it to their mouths. When a little brain has to do all that work, it can take a minute or two to answer an adult's question. Giving them time to process will really encourage them to answer questions. Younger children may also sometimes need help from you to supply new words to help them form an answer. Mama? Is that a mama? Yeah. Do you see everyone smiling? Why are they smiling? Why is the flowers make them smile? Maybe the flowers make them smile? The flowers make you happy? Talking about the pictures is a great way for young children to feel like readers. Even babies can engage in finding a familiar object or animal in the pictures. And older children are exercising the same brain muscles that independent readers use to understand a story. And when my kids pick a book that is just too long to read all the way through, we ignore the words completely and just talk about the pictures. When a child makes a connection between the book you are reading and their own life, a stronger neural connection is made in their brain. For infants, this is a vital developmental step towards realizing the picture in the book and the daisies in their garden are both flowers. When children get older, they are able to use the stories you read together to expand their understanding and empathy by putting themselves in a book character's shoes. Hi, I'm Gail, and I'm an early literacy librarian like Kate and Melody. I'm also a mother and have young family members that I love caring for. Let's explore some fun ways you can play and use things you have around the house to make learning fun. You can find ways to read together beyond lap time and bedtime. When you're out shopping, you can point out words on the signs. In the kitchen, show them how you read a recipe. Make a game of finding letters and words throughout your day. This practice opens up children to notice words and reading opportunities around them. Part of reading is observation. A plastic bottle becomes a reading tool when you use it to play I Spy. Fill the bottle with buttons, beads, or small toys. Together, look for something red, something round, something that starts with the letter A. Identifying shapes is the first step to learning letters, and the more words a child is familiar with, the better they will understand the words they read in school. Anything that gets you and your kids talking is important to their development. You can find books and activities at the library. Be sure to chat with your children's librarian. Find books that are on topics that are on the minds of children, like a favorite animal or character, and don't be afraid to let kids pick out their own books. From birth, children are learning and children are moving. Research has shown that a child's physical and mental development are more interconnected than you may think. Yet, so often, we expect children to sit still in order to learn. The truth is that children learn through play, and all that movement as they play is an important part of school readiness. From the moment we are born and grasp the finger of a caring adult, we are developing muscle control and coordination that will be essential for later learning. The skills needed to read and write are not only learned when we sit in a chair tracing letters or sit quietly listening to a story. They are practiced and mastered as children crawl and leap, toss and stack, stomp and clap. As children move and play, they are building a foundation for reading, writing, and learning success. We talk about two kinds of movement that help develop bodies. Gross motor, or big movements of larger body parts, and fine motor, small movements like fingers holding crayons or turning pages. Children need plenty of opportunities to practice and play using all parts of their body. Children are naturally active and on the move. As caregivers, we can nurture this instinct and promote growth in some key motor skills that are directly tied to a child's school readiness. We're going to focus on three of those skills, core strength, coordination, and fine motor control. Have you ever wondered how we can sit straight and balanced? Sitting requires core strength. Because humans develop from the center out, 
starting to build core strength is one of a child's first and most important physical development tasks. Core strength development begins as a baby. This is one of the reasons that tummy time is so important for infants. Especially now that doctors recommend babies sleep on their backs, during their waking hours, they need time on their tummies to build core strength in order to push up and eventually roll over and crawl. Older children continue to build core strength by pulling, pushing, climbing, and twisting as they play. With core strength comes coordination. For example, hand-eye coordination allows children to put food in their mouths or to put a crayon on the paper to draw. Another type of coordination that is really important is bilateral coordination. This means that the left side of the body knows what the right side is doing and vice versa. Children need bilateral coordination to hold a piece of paper steady with one hand while using the other to write from left to right across the page. Activities like crawling that encourage children to move from right to left or left to right, as well as up and down, are great coordination play. The third important set of movement skills are fine motor skills, which develop more fully after age three. Fine motor skills are what we use to create a pincer grasp with our fingers. This requires a lot of hand strength and muscle control in our fingers and wrists. Any play that gets kids to pinch, squeeze, or point really develops this fine motor control. There are endless playful activities to get kids moving and learning but my favorites include music and dance. Today, we're gonna to play with one simple element that can inspire the movements and motions to master core strength, coordination, and fine motor control. The scarf. The way scarves float and sway are very appealing to children, and they inspire dance moves that are going to target those gross and fine motor skills. You can find a variety of children's music at your local library and your librarian can recommend songs that even ask kids to follow directions and move in certain ways. But these same actions can accompany any dance music, and I prefer to dance along to my favorites. Just holding and swishing the scarf is activating the small muscles in our hands and wrists. You can add in some hand-eye coordination, like toss and catch. You can also get the big muscles involved and do some full body coordination, like right to left arm swings that cross the midline. And don't forget, big rainbow arms. If you are caring for an infant, they are also developing these skills, and the scarf is an excellent toy for them as well. Tummy time is essential for building core strength as they work to lift themselves up to see the world. Shaking a scarf across the floor gives them motivation to lift up. Watch the movement of the scarf and reach towards it. Babies will also enjoy grasping and shaking a scarf along with music. Thinking about building motor skills, one household item that is great is a small box. Actually, the more boxes, the better. These can be gift boxes or tissue boxes, and they're great because they're pretty square shaped and lightweight. I've glued on pictures that each represent a song. I pick songs that practice our gross and fine motor skills. So when you have one song on each side, ask your kiddos to toss the cube and sing whichever song they roll. Your librarian can suggest songs or you can choose your own. Small boxes are also perfect for mystery boxes. Place a small object in the box and let your child feel the object and ask them to guess what it is. Younger babies will just enjoy putting things in the box and pulling them out. Both of these activities activate the small muscles in your child's fingers and wrists. A third idea works if you're able to collect multiple boxes. They're great for stacking and building. Even though they're lightweight, when children balance the boxes, they're using muscle control to stack and build. When doing this or any activity, remember to ask questions like, what are you noticing? How can we build that higher? Which box is the biggest and which is the smallest? The more you ask questions and narrate what you see, the more children are able to learn from an activity. Do you know what a scientist and a toddler have in common? They both love to ask questions and to find out about the world by experimenting. 
Young children are natural scientists and engineers. We can explore the world around us together at the same time that we are helping them learn new words, tell stories about their observations, and build their brilliant young minds. When engaging in simple activities like exploring the outdoors, caregivers like us can create high quality early learning experiences by asking open-ended questions like, what do you think will happen if, and waiting for a child to answer. An open-ended question is a question that will have many possible answers instead of just yes, no, or other one-word responses. Allowing time for young scientists to experiment and describe what they observe helps their language and thinking skills develop as they play. And for young children, it is a more powerful learning experience to ask open-ended questions than it is for them, or for you, to find yes or no answers. I want to share with you three easy phrases that help me encourage curiosity and conversation when I work with kids. I notice, I wonder, and tell me more. I notice you're very interested in what's inside that pine cone. When we say, I notice, we are sharing the child's interest and efforts without judgment. My favorite phrase is, I wonder. The word wonder inspires creative thought and investigation. Sometimes when a child asks me a question, rather than looking up the answer, I respond with, I wonder, and let them use their imaginations. I wonder what's inside there. Ooh, did you smell? The last phrase I want to leave you with is, tell me more. This invitation to expand their ideas gets children talking and using new vocabulary. Can you tell me more about the squirrels? In addition to simple at-home science or engineering activities with household materials, you can use open-ended questions to introduce young children to science concepts by reading nonfiction picture books together. Look for books with beautiful photos and simple but engaging text. Books about animals, plants, and the natural world are a great place to start. Point out things you see in the photos and ask children questions like, what is that animal doing? To encourage both science and literacy learning at the same time. Be sure to ask your local children's librarian to recommend their favorite nonfiction books for young children. Whether the kids in your care want to know how trees grow or where flamingos live, Library staff are always happy to help you pick out books that will match your children's interests. Did you realize that toddlers and preschoolers are natural scientists? And you have so many things right in your home that help them explore and discover. Let's see what we have in our box of supplies today. Look, we have two toilet paper rolls perfect for making binoculars. Just tape them together. The kids can decorate paper ahead of time. Then you just tape it around the rolls to make fancy binoculars. If you have string, just put holes in the sides and tie the string in order to make a strap. Ta-da! Take a box and your binoculars when you go out walking together. Hunt for interesting rocks or leaves. Use the binoculars to check out birds in the trees and insects on the ground. Remember to practice asking open-ended questions such as, how are these two leaves different? Or what is that insect doing? Make sure you listen by giving young children plenty of time to think about an answer. Binoculars are one fun idea, and there are a lot of creative ways to play and explore science together with cardboard tubes. You can use different sizes to make sound tubes, having young ones discover the different noises in different sized tubes. You can also build ramps and play with the angles to see how fast a car goes, depending on the angle of the tube. Using everyday objects like cardboard tubes to create opportunities for young children to observe nature is a wonderful play-based way to bring science into your day together. Ask your children's librarian for more fun ideas and for science-themed picture books to complement your science playtime. Thank you for joining us as we share ideas for playing with children. Whether you are reading with the children in your care, dancing and moving, or exploring the world together, 
the play you enjoy with them will support healthy physical and mental growth and development. The time you spend together with the children in your care is special. The way you play and talk together makes a difference in how they learn and grow. And you already have what you need to create playful times together. Save those cardboard tubes, boxes, and other materials. For more inspiration, pick up this early literacy calendar from your local library. It has ideas for every day of the year. Remember that your children's librarian is a great resource for you and the children in your care. Stop into the library soon for more great ideas, books, and games. Thanks for joining us today to learn how talking and exploring like scientists can help young children play, learn, and grow. So long from your early literacy librarians at the Colorado State Library, we are all growing readers together. See you next time. Play, Learn, and Grow is an offering of Growing Readers Together. This video and other Growing Readers Together activities are made possible by the Colorado Department of Education, the Colorado State Library, the Buell Foundation, the Colorado Department of Human Services Office of Early Childhood, Colorado Shines Brighter, and your local public library. Thank you.